So this morning's session, we'll be taking a closer look at what it truly means to balance creativity with commercial awareness. So on the surface, your agency might be thriving. Briefs are hopefully rolling in. You're doing your exceptional work. Your clients are happy and paying you. The question that we don't often ask ourselves is, is everyone on the team working with the bigger picture in mind? Do they all understand that even a small decision can ripple out an impact on your agency's bottom line. So for example, you know, a project overrun here, a missed timesheet there, any project scope creep, or perhaps a purge sort of that kind of falls through the cracks. These are small oversights and they may seem insignificant, but collectively we know they can have a, a lasting impact. So there's a misconception that creative work and commerciality are often worlds apart and that the numbers are solely the domain of finance. But it doesn't have to be this way, and we don't think it should. Uh, and if we, you know, if we want to grow sustainably, it's something that we should look to change within our business. So the definition of commercial culture brings together two essential elements. Culture, which shapes how your team within the agency interact and work together, and then commercial, which focuses much more on the financial goals like your profit and your revenue. But when we combine the two together to get a commercial culture, hopefully you'll get a kind of a, a better shared mindset where every team member is mindful of both the creativity, but also the financial health of your agency. Absolutely. We love a good definition, don't we? Um, so commerciality can sometimes be confused and often thought out of as sort of founders and directors getting their next big car or a nice holiday. Um, and whereas they are obviously going to benefit, um, as they should, it's their business, um, moving away from that sort of fat cap mentality means that the whole company thinks uh, more commercially and will understand the benefits to them as a whole, creating sort of a, our agency rather than the agency. Um, so just as we do for you, Steve. Absolutely. Um, so as Kay said, it's not about, as you termed it, us fat cats taking all the profits. It's really about your team understanding why your team need to be thinking commercially about how also can benefit them. And I think these benefits can be communicated in different ways. I think, first of all, the team need to understand that making profit is pretty essential for not only covering operational costs, but also paying their wages and maintaining things like your facilities and the offices that you work in. Also, when profits are reinvested, they can fuel more business growth and improvements and a culture that values commercial awareness also encourages reinvestment enabling your agency to evolve adopt new technologies and hopefully stay more competitive within your industry obviously investors and lenders are much more inclined to support profitable businesses so an agency that is financially financially responsible makes it much easier to secure funding for expansion or development but also higher profits can lead to a higher market valuation, which again will improve your agency's reputation, but also can help attract more clients and also better talent, which again supports further growth. And then finally, with profitability, obviously you can offer better salaries, bonuses and benefits that can boost morale and hopefully attract kind of high skilled workforce and nurturing loyalty and productivity within your own team. Um, but that kind of maybe sounds a bit boring and financy still, Steve. Um, and when we think of agencies, uh, we think of them as like fun places to work. And, and definitely all the agencies I work with have really cool offices and, and some sort of fun space. Um, and what we need to promote is that commercial culture doesn't mean sort of no more fun. Uh, we can still be commercially aware and leave early on a Friday or have a slide down to the kitchen or, you know, fun things like that. And, and I guess what I'm saying is you can have the both, best of both worlds. So commerciality is just one part of your culture. Uh, so you've got to remember it's all about balance, uh, your work and your play. And I think to be successful, agencies need to have a blend of um, lots of C's. So commerciality, creativity, collaboration and client centricity. Um, easy for you to say. <laughs> so when it comes to looking at it, you know, what actually is a commercial culture and how can we break that down? 
we pick them into these three elements and we'll expand on these in a second but these are values behaviors and practices and hopefully if you get these right it can embed the commercial culture as more of a dna into agency values are more of your guiding principles that shape your approach both creative and commercially success and they could be things like a commitment to profitability sustainability or just kind of delivering great value to your clients often we might see that those values are something that's that's created by the management team or by a ceo that isn't often shared across the team so often if you ask your team what's our values then often they can't tell you so that's something that, that that's um important to to um to expand within your team behaviors these are more of your everyday mm -hmm. actions and they bring your values to life so those behaviors might be things like tracking project hours accurately prioritizing tasks or just considering both creativity and commerciality when you're making those decisions. And then finally, practices. These are the concrete processes and systems that support that culture. So they could include regular financial training for your team, a more transparent profit sharing model, or simple frameworks for managing project scope and budgets. So practices turn the values and behaviors into much more structured, repeatable tasks that will hopefully drive commercial awareness across all levels of the agency. So if we look at the, the first thing, the values, performance orientated is much more focusing on the measurable results to where everybody understands that their work should positively impact the agency's success. Accountability means that everybody takes responsibility for their work and its impact on agency's financial health and entrepreneurial that value encourages a proactive growth focused mindset where your team members think like owners and are open to new ideas for improving both profitability and efficiency. Um, and if we look at the behavioral side of things, there's some, some things you could be thinking about. So um, proactive um, client engagement. We've talked about this before, Vin, sort of being more proactive rather than reactive, being sort of brilliant at delivery, but also looking out for opportunities for your clients to improve. Um, tracking performance metrics and targets. So this is a bit of a favorite of ours. We like to talk about this. So looking at things like utilization, um, hours sold versus hours available um, and recoverability are all really important metrics to look at. Um, and a simple one, not over-servicing. Okay, so it's a really obvious one, right? But uh, knowing you have over-serviced is essential. So this is where potentially your estimated versus actual data is important. Um, and then making decisions based on that data. Um, so, for example, um, if you know you've over-serviced um, or you're not selling all the hours available, then you can change those behaviours. Um, and continuous improvement. So continually looking at the data analysis, making sure you're driving change, um, and that will obviously lead to improvement. Um, and a favourite of mine, uh, respecting time. So um, whether it's your own time or that of others, um, in over-servicing teams, uh, terms, not teams, over-servicing terms, uh, lines like, you know, it's only an hour, it soon adds up, uh, but also looking um, at where your internal time is spent. So do you really need four team meetings in a week, for instance? Um, transparency and honesty, um, once you have that data, to make sure that you're sharing it talk to the team about what it means um, and how everyone can improve it so um, if you don't know about something then you can't change it right um, and the last one there inclusion and teamwork and I'll talk about this a little bit more later but including all teams in estimating and quoting and collaboration between teams is is really important absolutely so we've done value behaviours and practices. Practices, I think, we need to expand a little, a little bit further, and, and they can go into four separate categories, um, in our opinion. So you've got your pricing, you've got a project and account management, but also profit analysis and understanding where that comes from, because fundamentally your practices are about driving revenue and decreasing costs to boost that profit number. Absolutely. Then we're all about the subcategories today. Um, so yeah. how do we make our pricing profitable? Um, so accurate estimating. So if you're not accurately estimating, you're not even going to know if you're breaking even. So thinking about your estimated versus actuals here again. Um, value based pricing. So once you've got your estimate, look at the va look at value adding. Um, so selling the value of the work, not just the time. 
Um, tiered pricing, um, so uh, recent benchmarking surveys have seen agencies with rate cards are more profitable than those with blended rates. Um, and making sure that you're giving three options to your clients. So good, better, and best. So quote for X, but if you did Y and Z, it could be better, hopefully making it more profitable for you also. Um, and remember the three Fs. So if you're not going to make a profit, um, always remember that the need, it needs to fall into at least one or all of the buckets of fame, fortune, um, or fun. Another webinar that we've uh, recently delivered, we've taken out some elements of that because it does have an impact on kind of um, fostering a more com commercial culture with your agency, but is is managing yeah, projects better. Uh, and some of the key elements in there include better effective scoping. So we know full well that if we can understand the project deliverables or the timelines or the requirements from the outset, it reduces scope creep and hopefully protects profitability. Kate mentioned before, and we go on about it a lot, obviously being okay. service users, but precise estimates, they provide a much more realistic view of projects and they help set expectations both internally, but also with the client. And then that leads on to aligning resource allocation with budget constraints. So that helps maintain your profitability and ensures that the efficient use of your team's capacity without hopefully overspending. On the same vein, your briefs, you know, a clear brief up front aligns your team on project goals, key messages and expectations will hopefully reduce that back and forth uh, interaction with your client, minimizes revisions and ensures the team can deliver quality work without hopefully compromising on the profitability. Yeah, the bane of every agency's life, but you know we know timesheets are crucial for understanding project costs, tracking profitability, and informing future estimates. So when your team members log time accurately, it provides a much truer picture of a project's performance. Not only time to project the profitability, all associated costs should be tracked. So that includes external vendors, travel expenses, and they should be tracked and accounted for. And again, that allows you to understand the true cost on each project. And then if you've got a, a magic system like Synergis, real-time budget tracking could help keep projects on track with an ongoing view of their financial status and also alert you to any potential problems that might be down the line. And then finally, yeah, open communication. So transparent communications with clients can build trust it provides opportunities to address changes, unexpected costs or additional requests as well. Um, and looking at camp Love management. That picture, Kate. Oh man, it's just- I think we've used it on every webinar so far. Literally, it's haunting me. It, it, well, it is Halloween, I guess, so, you True. know, <laughs> haunting myself. Um, so um, when we're looking at account management, we want to look at proactive account management. So um, if we're looking at this, breaking breaking it down, um, commercial training. So, you know, CS teams um, or teams in general, just we, they're not they don't come into agencies that are already trained for this. So you need to look at doing it like you, that yourself. And this can be done via mentoring workshops or lunch and learns are nice and um, trying to get everyone on board and understand the importance of that commerciality. Um, upselling and cross-selling, uh, so knowing what services your clients are buying from you um, and what you could be selling into them. Uh, we all know that retaining a client is far cheaper than, than winning new business. Um, and supporting difficult conversations. Um, so this sort of, sort of goes along with the, the commercial training, but just account training as well. So um, supporting those junior team members and, and making sure that they feel uh, supported and, and when talking to clients and having those difficult conversations. Um, regular check-ins. Um, so, and sharing performance data uh, means that you're always top of mind with your client um, and that they know that you've, you've got their back. Um, and during those check-ins, make sure you're discussing their business goals and objectives. Uh, but then actually actively following up um, on the ideas, um, you know, really, really making the work. And be above expectations. Uh, so but so make sure that you're doing an awesome job, but make sure you're never working for free. Um, as that delightful stat to meme tells us where I look so beautiful. Um, if you're over servicing your clients by 10% on each job, 
you're basically working for free for 1.5 months of, of the year. Yeah. So that's not a good thing. Which is not a good thing. No. And once you've done that, as I mentioned previously, it's it's about your analysis then. It's about looking at, you know, hopefully you're making some profit, but actually where are we making profit or where aren't we making profit? So that profitability needs to be categorised. And we, you know, are you making more from doing projects, retainers, if you offer both? Which clients, which accounts, which departments are more profitable? What type of work, creative, digital, brings in the most revenue? And then also, which account managers manage the most profitable accounts? So actually, are they doing something different that other account managers or, or client service team members aren't doing. So once you've done that and you've done your analysis and you can work out where that profit's coming from, then you can do your post review. And that could include things like standardizing a more kind of project process that you use across the team, creating perhaps templates. So you've got consistency across the team in terms of how people are costing jobs, holding regular training sessions, as Kate mentioned, you know, highlighting what went right, what went wrong, what could be improved, so again, I think that, that's a really important thing to do when you're looking at profit. Absolutely. Um, so we've mainly been concentrating on the sort of CS side of things. Um, but actually, you know, profitability is everyone's job. Um, so, you know, we're all in this together attitude. We'll um, end those more siloed um, sort of thinking and behaviours. Um, so how do we do that? So what should your team be doing? So um, sort of making sure you're including your creatives on decisions. So a little example for you would be back in the good old days when I worked agency side, when everything was in black and white, we had quite a big digital team um, and quite often their services were sort of undersold. So they the, the client was given a bargain there. So in turn, the digital team never had enough time to do the work um, or they went massively over on the hours. Um, so it just generally felt left them feeling really crappy because, you know, they the morale was low. They weren't getting paid for the work. They were getting moaned at and all that kind of thing. So making sure that you talk to your team about how much thing, how much something, how long something's going to take um, for them to do and how much it should cost. And then actually doing that um, will help that. Um, making sure that you timesheet correctly. Um, so obviously it's a, it's really important. And Steve, you mentioned that earlier. Uh, but I think if the team is invested and you've, you know, com conversed with them about how long things should take and how much things should be charged for, then it will make them more accountable and they're more likely to do, actually do their timesheets uh, correctly. Um, so focus on increased billing time. So this could include making sure as many hours are sold as possible to just making sure that you're resourcing those creatives uh, correctly and making sure that the time's put in the schedule effectively. Um, and also um, feedback. So making sure that they um, that the creatives know or the people who've done the work, uh, have the KPIs been met? Uh, what is the effectiveness of the campaign? And um, that can be clicks or traffic or whatever. Um, so it's not just about what you charge, but it's actually about the quality of the work delivered um, too. Um, and use free time proactively. Um, so this is another little example for you. It's all about the examples today. Um, is I had um, a really good video and motion head of service in one of my old agencies. And he was really proactive on making sure the team were using any spare time, upskilling themselves, doing new videos or different motion bits and bobs, and then selling that into the client services team who then in turn sold it into the client. So his team was always really busy and always like one of the, the best teams within the, within the agency. Now he left and became a freelancer. Uh, if you want to contact me, I can let you have his name. Um, then, <laughs> but when we got a new head of service and he was very good, but he just wasn't as proactive. And within a year, that team had shrunk and was just not doing as well so using that time is really important i think motion bits and bobs that's an interesting right. motion bits and bobs that's it what is actually right. an official term steve in right. the okay. Well. Thank you. <laughs> so we've uh, we just looked there at kind of what your team should be doing to help improve the commerciality but we need to think about what we should be doing as potential kind of team leaders to also change your team's thinking so yeah, the first thing we look at is looking at what works well. It's not about kind of, you know, throwing the baby out of the bathwater is, you know, what works well in your existing culture. You don't want to lose the good values and behaviours. So that that's a kind of a, a good starting point. 
Absolutely. And to make sure you're communicating it. So sharing your vision for the new new culture with the, with, with the, the whole team um, and sort of clearly articulating the values, the behaviours and the practices that you that you want to promote. Um, ex explain that business opportunity and the urgency of it. So don't just say we're going to do this in six months. You need it, you need it now, the urgency to change. And make sure you share what's in it for them. So what are the benefits going to be? And make sure you address any fears, doubts or resistance, because your aim here is to bring everyone together um, for the, the, that common goal and um, make sure everyone feels enthusiastic about it. Yeah, that involves, you know, involving the team is important. It's kind of brainstorming new ways of working and removing barriers. So, you know, we've never done it like that before or we've tried it and that didn't work. You know, we need to get rid of that and, and, and allow kind of open ideas to, to come into the team as well. Yeah, totally. And train. So I touched on this a little bit earlier, um, but provide training and make sure they've got people have got the resources and the support that they need um, so they can understand and sort of adapt that new cultural um, value and practice. Um, and as I said before, this could in include your workshops or uh, mentoring, team building exercises, anything like that. And it might be also that you need to adjust certain policies or procedures to support that change. So that could be a change in job descriptions. It could be more performance reviews, or it might be the introduction of, of new systems. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> um, and beyond that initial training, keep up uh, regular the top up training as well and sort of make sure everyone's supported um, and keep asking for feedback um, so you can really navigate any resistance before it becomes a problem. But whatever we do, I think we need to look at being engaging as leaderships and setting by example. So if you're in a leadership role or a project role, then all of those things we've covered um, previously, we should be doing as a leadership team because hopefully then that will set example to the rest of the team. Just like you do for us, Steve. I hope so. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and make sure you're celebrating those successes. So recognize and reward behaviors so that sort of align with that new culture. Um, because I think celebrating small wins can sort of really um, reinforce the, and the, the desired changes. But also, we know that changing any culture, you know, isn't an overnight thing that takes time, but you need to be prepared to be, um, to have setbacks, but also to remain committed because unless you do, then nothing's going to change in, in the future. Mm. So that brings us towards the end, 20 odd minutes of today's webinar. Um, we'd like to leave you with a few kind of key takeaways from today's webinar. We will be sending it out so you can share it with the rest of your team. But for me, one of the things is, you know, you can have best of both worlds. So hopefully we've, we've demonstrated that, that, you know, you can have the kind of fun times and the commerciality, but also you can bring in that idea of, of, of um, uh, sorry, kind of fun creative, but the commerciality should also be embedded in the team that everything that you do and everything that everybody does has an impact on the, on the agency's bottom line. Absolutely. And sort of involve the team. So make sure you're communicating all the changes um, and make sure you're getting the feedback so everyone feels accountable for the new behaviours. And finally, profitability is for all, as we said, you know, it isn't just about kind of, you know, feeding those at the top, but actually how that should trickle down and that should be shared with the rest of your team. And hopefully that will help improve commerciality across the agency. So that brings us to the end of another webinar uh, for today. I hope you enjoyed it. We've uh, we tried to cover a lot in, in a short amount of time. We're sending out the webinar as a recording for you to view if you've not been able to watch it live or to share it with your team. If you did have any questions, feel free to drop either myself or Kate a line. And if you were interested in any of the other topics that we've done previously, um, you can find those on our YouTube channel, along with uh, a number of other webinars and insights like Jay's A-game. Um, but thanks all for joining. Thanks, Kate, for joining once again. Hope you Thank have you. a great week. And if you're interested in joining our next webinar, it's on strategic account planning. And that is planned for Wednesday, the 20th of November. So thanks once again. Have a great day. Thanks, guys.